Good morning. Welcome to St. John's Episcopal Church uh, on this uh, second Sunday in September. Glad to have everybody worshiping with us today. Got a whole host of announcements for us this morning, so just hang tight. Uh, Sunday school begins this morning at 9.15. It's an intergenerational, so for all ages, uh, we'll be meeting in the parish hall at 9.15. If you're interested in joining our choir or singing in the choir, the choir is going to begin rehearsing today uh, starting at 9.30. Uh, So if you'd like to to do that, if you're watching online and plan to come later, uh, Sunday school is at 9.15 and choir rehearsal starts at 9.30. Uh, Also, particularly for the people watching online, if you're watching us this morning and plan to come to the late service, uh, we are now in our 10.30 uh, worship mode for the second service of the day. So if you're planning to come later today, uh, that service will begin at 10.30 uh, this morning. But again, if you're here early, we'd love to have you join us for Sunday school or choir rehearsal. All right. Uh, Disciples Kitchen is coming up. There's a little announcement about that in your bulletin. I'll leave that for you to review there. Uh, next Sunday, there's a couple things happening. Uh, one is Father Bruce Torrey from Food for the Poor will be visiting us Uh, Again, we haven't seen him uh, since I think pre-pandemic days, so we'll be glad to welcome him next Sunday as he shares with us the ministry of Food for the Poor, a ministry that has also helped to support our friends at St. Mark's School in Circle of Sousse in uh, years past. And also next Sunday, September 18th, there's a citywide or community-wide youth event for high school students at the Wayne Theater from 3 to 5 p.m., Uh, And that's on the subject of mental health and trauma. So if you know any high schoolers uh, in your life that may uh, appreciate or do well to participate in that event, it's going to be a panel discussion and a little presentation to support our youth, uh, particularly high school age youth, uh, around the issues of trauma and mental health. That's next Sunday, 3 to 5 at the Wayne Theater. There's other announcements for you to review in the bulletin, so I encourage you to do so. Again, I just I want to say welcome, and let us now take a moment of silence to prepare ourselves for worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be your kingdom, now and forever. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee. We bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, 
heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, for as much as without Thee we are not able to please Thee, mercifully grant that Thy Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with Thee in the same Spirit liveth and reigneth one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. May be seated for the reading of the lessons. Our first reading is a reading from Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I have commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed it, in fact, and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen these people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them and of you and will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with great mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that we brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from your fierce wrath. Change your mind and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying that to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven and all in all this land that I have promised, I will give your descendants and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he had planned to bring to his people. The word of the Lord. Let us pray together Psalm 51, uh, responsively by half verse. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness, in your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is everywhere. Against you only have I sinned and done evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for deep, you look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin and I shall be pure. Make me hear of joy and gladness that body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Our second reading is a reading from the book of Timothy. I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord, who has strengthened me because he judged me faithfully and, and appointed me to his service, even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love 
that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of all ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Now, all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. The Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you? having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it. When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance? Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God, over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. When I was a child, there was a game my friends and brothers and I used to play. It was called Treasure Hunt. It's pretty much exactly the way it sounds. One of us would take a toy or an item, and we would go somewhere in the house to hide it while everyone else stayed in just one little room. Then, after it was good and hidden, the rest of the people would be let out of the room and they could go and search for it, looking for this one little toy, this treasure, we called it. Essentially, it was a year-round version of an Easter egg hunt, except there was only one item to be found. And the prize for winning or finding this hidden item was that you got to be the next one to hide it. So we were always pretty motivated to be the one that found this toy. In a lot of ways, playing treasure hunt is part of our everyday life. Except instead of looking for a hidden toy, we might be looking for something more consequential. Perhaps we're looking for a friend, a partner, maybe the ideal job, more ways to save, or make money. But what about meaning and purpose? Do we search gleefully for the mystery and meaning of life itself? I'll be honest with you. 
Sometimes that is the only thing I find myself searching for. Many days I wake up and I wonder, what is the point of this day or this moment or this life? What will inspire me to get out of bed and face the world today? Tough questions. There's a work of literature called The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. You might be familiar with it. It started out as a radio broadcast and then a novel and eventually became a hit movie and TV series. But in this story, there is a supercomputer that is designed, that it's, des it's designed for one thing, to answer the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything. And finally, after seven and a half million years of this supercomputer doing its work, it arrives at the answer. Are you ready for this? The answer is 42. 42. Who knew? In this story, the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything is 42. Now, in this story, probably like you yourself, it leaves the characters scratching their head perplexed, at which point they realize perhaps they never really knew the question that they were supposed to be asking. To be honest, I don't know exactly how the rest of the story plays out in this work of literature, but the quest is on. The characters are now searching for that proper question. The proper question indeed. In today's gospel passage, Jesus tells a set of parables to one audience, but with two different types of listeners, sinners and the righteous. And depending on which type of person one identifies as, one would hear Jesus' parables differently. The sinner would hear this, that heaven rejoices over the lost being found. And the righteous might hear this, that heaven rejoices when the lost are found. But wait. Isn't that the same message? Perhaps, but perhaps not. Because what is the experience of being lost? What might it be like to have been searching one's whole life looking for the wrong things, for wealth, possession, privilege, or prestige? And when these things are found, are we any closer to heaven? Or what about the experience of being not lost? The experience of being part of the crowd that never wandered off in search of gold or greener pastures. Living the life of the expected norms and behaviors. Is this the taste of heaven? Again, I think we might be asking the wrong question. Jesus wants us to know that God's kingdom is not about life of earthly treasures, nor is it about simply following rules. While both of those things certainly have benefit, they are not the answer to the ultimate question. Our meaning and our purpose are not wrapped up in what we possess or what we do. But rather, life is about what God has done for us and knowing ourselves to be in God's very presence. That is, the purpose is about belonging to God, being part of God's family, being beloved by God. Waking up in the morning when I have little to no strength of my own, I can rest assured that I am beloved by God. I am desired by God. I am sought after with fierce and passionate devotion by God. Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, is always looking, always searching. I might not know this when I wake up, but what God wants me to know is that who I am is a child 
of God. Maybe that is meaning enough. Or maybe that is the daily starting point, the point in which I begin my pursuit of looking for the work that God has for me to do that day. Thinking back to the game of treasure hunt, it really was that exciting. It really was something that we could play for hours on a rainy day, just like today. But that is also life. And today, I pray that we might remember that God does search for us with joy. And that as we enter each new day, we can go with enthusiasm and joy, searching for what God would have us share with the world, share with those who might be lost, and maybe even those who are found. Amen. Standing as we are able, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications <clears throat> and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in thy truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other bishops, remembering especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Mark and Heath, our bishops, Benjamin, our rector, Brian, our deacon. We also pray for the Right Reverend Nicholas Baines in the Diocese of Leeds, the Episcopal Church of Sedan and St. And St. Mark's School in Circular Source, Haiti. We pray for our mission 
our friend in mission, the Right Reverend Patrick Augustine, Assistant Bishop of the Diocese of Bor in the Episcopal Church of South Sudan, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to the congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, remembering especially Joe, our president, Glenn, the governor of our commonwealth, and Bobby, our mayor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people who behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We pray for all the health care workers and essential employees in our community and around the world, remembering especially Scott, Adam, Joel, Elaine, Matt, Kathy, Greg, Michael, Melinda, Bethany, and Julia. And we also pray for all teachers and school employees, remembering especially Doris, Susan, Elizabeth, Dale, Kathy, Susan, Alex, Michael, Amanda, John, Amy, Anthony, Edmund, uh, Brent, Brichy, Melissa, Pam, and Anna's House Elementary School. We pray for those on our parish family prayer list, prayer list, including the Ukraine and its children. The Day family, John, Jim, Laura, Tom, Lucy, Kay, Donna, Ashley, Natalie, Robin, Courtney, Elizabeth, Janet, Teresa, Frank, uh, Frank, Allison, Richard, and the children and youth of our community. We pray for the safety of our armed forces at home and abroad, remembering especially Ander, Ryan, Michael, Matthew, Carson, Nathaniel, Richard, Nathan, Jason, Ryan, Brendan, Kyle, and Matt. We thank God for those celebrating birthdays this week, remembering especially Sony Level, Sherry Ricker, Joanne Garcia, and Tom Manival. And we also bless thy holy name for all these servants who departed this life in thy faith and fear. Remembering especially in early day. Queen Elizabeth, Shirley and Bill Kappas. Flowers today have been given by their children and grandchildren and by them, especially for Emily and grant a continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. And now let us confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against Thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved Thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry 
and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. Will the congregation please rise as you're able. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord. Lord God of hosts, <laughs> heaven and, and earth are, are full of thy glory. glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, O Lord our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth, and didst make us in thine own image. And of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. 
Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit, to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver, deliver us from, from evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. We do not presume, presume to, to come, come to this, this thy table, O merciful Lord, Lord trusting, trusting in our own righteousness, righteousness but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of Thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech Thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with Thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as Thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with Thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. My friends, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you this day and forever. Amen. And now let us depart in peace. Remember the poor. Pray for the sick and love one another. May God, through the Holy Spirit, be within us to refresh us, around us to protect us, before us to guide us, above us to bless us, beneath us to hold us up. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Praise.